Welcome back to What Matters This Week. I'm Lauren Maloney. New year, the mayor's in this January. Mayor Moreau Weinberger, thank you so much for being here. Happy New Year, Lauren. It's great to be back with you. Excited Happy about New 2019. Year. Excited yes. to talk about it a little bit. We have a lot to discuss, but, but yeah. first of all, um, the news this week when it comes to former police officer, former head of CUSI, Art Seer, um, facing some serious charges when it comes to inappropriately touching a girl. Your mm. comment. Um, you know, I thought Chief Del Pozo's reaction was right on yesterday. I mean, it is always troubling when um, former law enforcement officials are involved in any kind of allegations of wrongdoing. Certainly the nature of the allegation here combined um, with the roles that uh, Art Seer um, uh, occupied when he worked for the Burlington Police Department um, make it all the more troubling. Uh, uh, I think you know, the, the state police clearly have, have pursued an investigation when with working with the prosecutors are moving forward. And I think you'll now see an accounting for this in the, in the court of law. Okay. Mayor, we're almost a week after Highlight, the yes. new New Year's Eve celebration in the city. This was the first year, the first of many, I'm sure you hope. So how was it? I thought it was a big success, Lauren. I thought it went great. You know, we had something like 6,000 plus people um, ticketed. Uh, and the crowds were, they were big, they were upbeat. Uh, I thought some of the new venues that we rolled out this year worked great and were really quite different and kind of fresh. Uh, and it felt, it felt like a new event, mm -hmm. as it was supposed to. Um, I, uh, I thought the Echo Center in particular, opening that up and having this art installation as well as the bonfire and the fireworks uh, was pretty special and really brought thousands of people down to the waterfront, whereas in past years we have not seen a lot of activity there. So I thought it was great. Uh, it was I warm, did, it, the, the, warm. Certainly the weather helped. And I think, you know, we haven't kind of done a full debrief yet and figured out what it means for the future. But I, I think it's pretty clear that the Burlington community um, likes coming together on New Year's Eve and we got to find a way to keep that going. So we'll, you know, look for news uh, as to future highlights uh, in the weeks right. ahead. Because yeah. it's early yet to start thinking about. Right? Yeah. Um, when it comes to 2019 um, for the city, you know, maybe your goals when you look at the first quarter, I know there's a lot on tap. So what may come up first for yeah. you in the next few weeks, few months? Well, the first quarter, I think a, a lot of the city discussion is going to be focused on town meeting day, which comes up, of course, the first week in March. And um, it looks like there will be quite a number of decisions before the voters. There's, of course, a number of city council elections there. Are, it looks like will be three charter changes uh, before um, the voters. And there's somewhat nuts and bolts sort of city business type of stuff. But one of them in particular, I think the public is going to be interested in really appreciate when we get it done. We are proposing the creation of a new permitting and inspections department that would essentially create a one-stop shop for all of the public's permitting and inspection needs. Um, and it would also create a single point of accountability. Instead of, you know, currently you gotta go to three different departments to uh, get all of your permits together and to get your certificate, certificate of occupancy. Okay. This will create one permitting inspections department that is responsible for all of that. And we think this should really, you know, address one of the biggest complaints we get about city government, which is that sometimes people, as, even though we have really talented, committed public uh, officials working in these departments, there is a real kind of division of responsibilities that can be confusing now and cause people to have to run to numerous different locations. And this addresses that, and I think it's going to work a lot better. And it's something that we've been working on for years with the support of the city council. We're excited to bring it to the voters in March. Um, any pushback or anything that you think is going to have to um, need some meetings to, to really debrief voters before March rolls around? Um, <clears throat> well, there, another one of the uh, charter changes is one that I know there is some debate about already. Um, it's about the idea of expanding the active management of the downtown from just being Church Street as we have now with the Church Street Marketplace to being active management of really the whole downtown. It's something people have been, again, there to talking about for decades, and there's a lot of support and excitement about. Uh, there's also, you know, fair questions about it. Uh, we've been doing, we've had real success with the marketplace, uh, and questions about changing that, expanding that are, are fair. Um, we've, you know, it, 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 it appears the council is going to give the go-ahead for that, although they still is sort of probably one more big meeting on that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I do think is something that I'll, I'll, I think there will be a need for some real discussion and debate about before voters weigh in because it is a, it is a significant change. I think it's a uh, I think it moves us in the right direction. I think visitors and residents will enjoy downtown um, even more once this uh, goes through. But I think it's uh, 
going to be something that there is some debate about. When it comes to charter changes, we should reiterate that they do have to be approved by the legislature, of course, even yeah. if the voters give the go-ahead. Yeah, that's interesting. And a step in the process, most people um, probably aren't too aware of it. What that comes from is the fact that we are, you know, for all of the um, talk of, um, uh, it's not just talk, but we have this value of, of local governance of, of kind of, uh, I, I think we believe in the, the uh, action at the local level. It, you know, it's one of the Vermont ideals, right, of people making decisions at town meeting day. Um, we are not a home rule state. The legislature um, uh, uh, keeps the authority over what cities and, and municipalities can do, um, which is, which it, all states, all cities and, and towns are creatures of the state they are in. Other states have a little bit more of a default, uh, a kind of, um, you know, the sort of more of a presumption that the locality is right and the less the state says uh, you can't do that. In Vermont, it's kind of the other way. Mm -hmm. Like you, cities and state, uh, cities and towns can't do anything unless the legislature approves that. And that's why we have to go through an approval process whenever we want to make a charter change, the legislature needs to weigh in on that. Usually it's a pretty efficient process um, and happens before the end of the legislative session. And that's what I would hope would happen with these three if that, if, you know, if they are approved by the voters. Okay. Also, one of the goals for 2019 is to improve <clears throat> City Hall Park. And there's yes. a lot that comes into play when it comes to this plan, right? Yeah, there is. I, I'm really excited about this proposal. It's one that is the um, result of really decades of debate about uh, about City City Hall Park and how to make it a better place. I think uh, while most of us, I think, love City Hall Park on Saturdays when the farmer's market is there, through a lot of the rest of the, the year, it is really kind of run down, under, underused, and doesn't work as well as it should. This plan uh, is the product of about seven years of iterative public engagement where we have come up with a plan that has a lot of support in the community that would do three big things, Lauren. It will, first of all, make the park greener. It will dramatically expand the, the vegetation and improve the landscaping in the park. It keeps about the same number of trees as are there currently, um, but they will be healthier trees because uh, we won't um, continue the problems that have, uh, you know, may result in about half the and, trees in the park being in poor health. Yeah, and uh, we just, should mention there is yeah. that outside group um, yeah. who, who very much, um, I guess, is, is for the trees and keeping as many as possible in City Hall Park. Are you working with them? Yeah, we, we absolutely are. Um, we uh, actually kind of took an extraordinary step last summer and um, uh, took a plan that had already been fully permitted and approved by all the public bodies, and we had a kind of additional ad hoc process uh, with a special committee that included a couple members of the Keep the Park Green yep. that resulted in adding back a number of additional trees. And so we're at the point now, Lauren, where whereas currently there were 51 trees in the park, there will be 48 uh, when the new project is, uh, is complete. And again, instead of about half of them being in poor health, uh, we think the design this time will get it right so that all those th trees can thrive. The other big changes the public will notice and I think enjoy is um, the accessibility of the park uh, it will be improved substantially. The paths are being widened uh, and the grades change so that people have mobility issues can get around the park easily. Um, and I think uh, it will just be a much more welcoming place in terms of, of, of appearance, in terms of the fountain is going to, instead of this broken fountain that most parents kind of keep their kids away from because mm -hmm. it's kind of gross, uh, it is going to be a, uh, a modern uh, fountain that runs well. The lighting is going to be substantially better and I think make it feel safer during the night. So you add all that up, I think it's going to be a park that gets a lot more use by Burlingtonians and visitors throughout the year. I think it's going to be an exciting improvement to the downtown. What's the first big change and when can, can people start seeing it? Well, the plan, you know, the city council voted on this last June and they, and they kind of directed the city team to go and get this into construction in 2019. Um, we have been working hard on that. We have the construction plans done. We are going out to bid in the next few days. And the plan is as soon as the, uh, the weather breaks, as soon as the winter ends, we will have a substantial amount of construction this construction season. So the park will be closed in 2019 is, is the plan. See, the farmer's market will be moving to another location. Okay. Um, and the, the hope is to get, you know, millions of dollars of work done in one season so that the park can be fully reopened for 2020. Mayor, thanks for being on. Always great to be with you, Lauren. Thank Happy you. New Year to you, to you and your, your viewers. Look forward to being back sometime soon. Thank you, Mayor. You as well. And we'll be right back on What Matters This Week.